Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars and welcome to another supercharged Corvette video. I'm so excited about this one because I'm gonna fill you guys in on everything we discovered since the last video. So many of you had commented about the part numbers that we found on certain parts on this engine and we've discovered that there has been a lot done to this thing, including a $9,000 Pro Charger kit. So there's a good chance that this C4 has a built engine as well. So we're gonna find out for sure by taking a bunch of stuff apart, looking inside the engine, and we're also gonna diagnose why it doesn't run so well. So with that, if you guys enjoy an automotive YouTube channel that kind of just gets right to work, gets dirty almost immediately, okay. Oh wow, this fuel leak has gotten really bad. Woo! Okay, we gotta figure that out. That could be why it's running bad too. You, you don't want fuel leaks, especially when there's leaves. We've created a Corvette bomb. But anyway, if you enjoy a video that gets right to work, consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost at 800,000, which is insane. So with that, let us get to work. We have to remove these fuel lines that are now pressurized. That was not smart. So the fuel bled out here in about 10 seconds. So. We don't have any pressure, I don't think. Nope, it's all gone. Oh, no it's not, just kidding. Just kidding, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> so it seems to me that the fuel is leaking out at the bottom here, it's kinda hard to see, but we have lines here, uh, and I think there are O-rings inside, so we're gonna pull up this rail right now. And we are going to test and clean these injectors with a new tool that I just bought. I can't wait to show you guys, I can't wait to figure out how it works. But it all starts with me taking these injector clips off, which they're all there. Usually these are missing. So that's a good sign, right? Oh, and these are 42 pound fuel injectors. One of you guys had ran the numbers that we showed in the last video. So that makes sense with a supercharger and the old LT1 days, 42 pounders were a very popular mod. And we Googled the part numbers on the cylinder heads. This has LT4 heads. So in 1996, Corvette had an LT4 engine, but it wasn't an option in 1993. Um, but the LT4 heads became a very popular modification. It was kind of a nice factory upgrade. So some guys would do the LT4 heads, the 1.6 roller rocker arms, which we have, and they would do the GM hot cam. So kind of just a one step up cam from what these had. So it gave it a little bit of a lump, a little bit more power, but wasn't too radical. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume this has this traditional top end refresh with the different springs, titanium retainers, all that. So hopefully they completed everything and did the bottom end, but we're gonna find out. I do believe these are the factory fuel rails made in the USA. Uh, yeah, that looks like a GM part number. With 42 pound injectors, I would imagine the power that this engine makes is right in line with using factory fuel rails. You probably didn't need bigger ones. Now oh, these are so easy. There's no clips holding them in. You just kind of bolt it in and, and that's it. Very simple to replace fuel injectors on these. And these older GM injectors did go bad. So three hole, man, those look really big. Okay. All right, there we go. Here's our fuel rail and it does feel like there are O-rings in there. All right, so we're gonna scribe these fuel injectors just so we know which ones correspond to the proper cylinder. That way if we find something wrong when we pull the plugs, we'll maybe have an idea that that injector is bad, but we're gonna be testing those long before then anyway. All right, let's pull these out. Something that I like to see here is the O-rings are in really good condition. They're not all flattened out. Not a bad idea to replace anyway, but these would probably seal just fine. All right, so I just got this in the mail yesterday. Not sponsored at all. I just picked this up off of Amazon. And I've always wanted to try one of these things. It's a fuel injector tester and cleaner. So we're gonna be able to stick the injectors in the top here and measure the flow into these beakers and do an ultrasonic cleaning as well. So I have a feeling if this works, that I'm gonna be using this in many more of these abandoned car kind of rescue deals. Uh, it looks like from the history that this Corvette's been sitting for the better part of five or six years, and these are old 90s fuel injectors, so that could be the reason why this engine isn't running that well. So anyway, I have to read this and build this whole thing, and, and we'll get to testing. All right, so we did learn that the first step is cleaning the external area of the fuel injector. So the outside, because you don't want any dirt and debris getting inside of the beakers or anywhere in the machine. A little brake clean and some shop air. All right, so we figured out that we have to screw these guys into our fuel rail. It looks like the injectors are just going to sit in like this. We can do four at a time. Hey, check this out though. We have a torn O-ring for this injector. That could definitely cause it to run rough. 
sucking in air. If we have any sealing issues with the test, we'll have to replace that, but we'll have to replace it anyway once we get it on the car. All right, so then all we're doing is going on like this with the rail. We're gonna thread these studs in and we tighten everything down. That's how it seals. Okay, cool. This is solid. We got our gauge here. Now we're gonna connect the electrical connector to each injector, like so. If you're curious what this looks like on the inside, I've removed the back panel. I kind of wanted to see how this all works. And it looks like we have a small little pump and a tank here. Uh, it does look like you fill the fluid through here, which is a little kind of weird. This is also the sight glass on the side to see how much is in there. Okay, I guess that'll work. Um, and here is the ultrasonic cleaning tank. So it has a separate little sink and we're gonna be putting the injectors in here. They'll be held in with this guy. And then this is the drain for that tank with this hose going right here. So pretty neat. First, we're gonna kick this off with filling this with normal gasoline though to check the spray pattern and how much flow the injectors have. All right, right now we're just gonna fill this tank up with regular gasoline. We're almost there, we're waiting for the sight glass to be probably around here. All right, I'd say we're good right there. All right guys, with that, we're ready to fire this bad boy up. Nice, it's got cool LED lights. This looks so cool. All right, so we're gonna just start off with the number two idle test. This is the working time and injector times. We're just gonna go to their default and see what happens here. Press start. Nice. Well, I gotta say, at first glance, they look pretty good. So now essentially these injectors are racing. Uh, and we're gonna see if they both fill up the same amount of fluid. And we know that they're flowing the same, at least relative to each other. We're gonna use this on all of these old cars. This is awesome. So not only are we able to test fuel injectors with this, but we can fix them as well. And there's an on-car option as well, uh, which I haven't read too deep into, but we don't even need to take the fuel injectors out for that. We can use the machine to pulsate them. All right, let's just stop this here and see where we're at. Yeah, I mean, these are all exactly the same. They're all right at 11 milliliters. So these four fuel injectors are flowing perfectly. All right, so I wanna do a leak test. So we're gonna bring this to number seven, leak checking test, press start. Okay, so what this is doing now is it's increasing the fuel pressure. It looks to be about 55-ish PSI. And then we can watch to see if these are leaking out. This is awesome. This is great. All right, they're not leaking. Uh, looks like it's counting down here. I'm gonna say I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. This is the coolest thing in the world. High speed test, no problem. Coming right up, number 10. Look at that high speed. This is definitely gonna help us tell if they're flowing the same much quicker. This one's a little different, I think. Anyway, let's press stop. And yeah, they, they pretty much all flow exactly the same. That's great. All right, so right now we're gonna drain all of these and it's gonna go right back into the fuel tank. So another reason why you wanna start with really clean injectors, especially in the bottom portion, you don't want any crud falling inside of these beakers. You want these to stay very nice and clean. So right now we're gonna swap out injectors and test the other four. We're looking for big issues here. I wanna see if we have just a totally bad fuel injector and then we'll clean them, but I think overall these injectors, if they flow like these did, they're just gonna be okay. So then we'll just go ahead and stick these guys in here since we're done testing them for now. And we'll test these four. All right, I'm gonna start off with the leakage test on these. Oh shoot, stop, stop, stop. Okay, I am soaked. My wife told me I smelled like gasoline a little bit yesterday, which I barely did anything with gas yesterday. So today, sorry babe, I'm gonna smell really bad. The one with the torn O-ring is this one, which was fine. Huh, maybe we just didn't have it tightened down all the way. I don't know, it shouldn't have leaked. All right, here goes nothing. Wait a minute. Aha. Leak all you want now, buddy. Ah! Well, that's the one with the torn seal. It almost makes sense. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see if the torn seal was actually gonna leak. All right, we need a new seal. All right, let's go ahead and replace this O-ring. This represents the first faulty part on the C4 Corvette that we're replacing. This definitely could have caused an issue on the car. Look at that, this is really bad. So we'll get new ones for it, but just because I don't wanna run to the store right now, we're just gonna borrow one. All right, last time. First four did so well. Fire in the hole. Jesus. All right. Okay, looks like we got it to seal. Excellent, and doesn't look like anything is leaking. 
And we're at about that 55, 58 PSI, something like that. Let's just go right for the high speed test. Off to the races. Who's gonna win? Well, hopefully they all tie. In this case, I'm all about like a participation trophy because everybody tied. That's what we want right now. Actually, I don't know. Actually, I would like to find a bad fuel injector. That'd be pretty cool. Really easy fix for a, a bad running engine on an LT. Oh, that's it. Okay, timed out. All right. Yeah, they're perfect. They're all right around 40 to 41 milliliters of fuel. This is the best. Who would have known little beakers and LED lights and electrical pulses would make someone so happy? You do? All right, so at this point, we're gonna do the ultrasonic. And since that test timed out and we had 41 milliliters, that's a good baseline now. So we can do the ultrasonic cleaning and then see if they flow any more. Look, we have another bad O-ring on the injector. At this point, we're gonna throw all these guys in here. Okay, and we have to fill this little tank with a fuel injection cleaner. And for this, we're gonna use the Amsoil Performance Improver. This is what you normally put in your gas tank and it's gonna clean out your injectors and intake valves and stuff like that. But we're gonna use it more directly to clean up our fuel injectors. You just need a little bit, just like that. Just enough so that the injector is sitting in the fluid. So then we do have to reconnect the injectors electronically. We only have a harness for four, so I have to clean only four at a time, no big deal. All right, so now we're gonna go to number one, ultrasonic cleaning. Oh, that is the worst sound ever. It's nails on a chalkboard, but worse. All right, so if you guys are wondering what ultrasonic cleaning is, <clears throat> it is the penetration and cavitation shock wave generated by the ultrasonic wave propagated in the medium. The medium being our performance improver. So basically we are cleaning stubborn carbon from inside of the fuel injector by an ultrasonic shockwave. Pretty cool. So this timer started at 10 minutes. So each one of these is gonna get 10 minutes of ultrasonic shockwave cleaning. Um, and then we will test them to see if they flow anymore. Again, I don't think they will. I think these are all in really good condition outside of the seals. Timer just went out on this one. I'm just curious. Okay. Yeah, we definitely have some stuff going on in here. Look at that. And I mean, we really blew these things out with compressed air. So none of this is from the top side or the outside body of the injector. And I guess it could have been little pieces of debris from the O-rings, that's possible. So now we're just gonna switch these connectors over here and start the test all over again. All right, so we got these plugged in. Horrible noise. And they are cleaning. All right, while the machine's cleaning our last four injectors, let's fix the fuel leak on the rail. Yeah, they don't make these things easy to get to. We gotta use a swivel and a little quarter drive. Not too bad. There we go. Didn't strip anything out. That's always a plus. No more background noise. Our ultrasonic cleaning is done. There's some O-rings. Yeah, these O-rings don't look too bad, but we are going to replace them all. All new rail O-rings and injector O-rings. And we know we're eliminating any potential issues. So here's the one that was leaking. Yeah, it's nice and flattened and it's harder than the rest. So that kind of makes sense. That one looks to be in much better condition. Yeah, this guy is, it's smaller actually than the other O-rings. I wonder if it was replaced with the wrong one at some point. These all seem to be the exact same line fittings, but that is clearly smaller than the rest and it was leaking. All right, cool. Well, at least we figured something out with that. Let me tell you, you gotta get yourself one of these O-ring kits. Uh, I've gotten a few of these off of Amazon. They're really cheap and they are a lifesaver. Good quality O-rings. I've used these for years. And check it out. This is one of the old ones and this is a new one in the kit. It looks like we have the exact same O-ring. So if we went to the auto parts store to get these exact O-rings or the dealership, they'd probably charge us more than what this entire kit costs. Uh, and now we have a ton of backups as well. So. Anyway, we got new O-rings. Before we replace those O-rings, let's just clean up our fuel rail. And we'll just use a plastic bristled brush here to clean this all up. I don't want to scratch it or anything. Look at that, it's so pretty. Oh, you know what? We should test this diaphragm right now. Make sure it's not leaking. All right, so we're gonna hook up our Mighty Vac here and check for vacuum. This should hold. Oh, that is not holding at all. That is dropping quick. All right, if you ever see something that bad, check your tool. Plug this up with my finger. Tool is holding. And then we'll check the hose we just put on there too. And the hose is holding as well. And I really didn't suspect any issues with this because we use the engine vacuum right here. I kind of pulled it off away from here. And usually if it sucks up fuel, you know the diaphragm is leaking. Now there's a spring in here, so you gotta be careful when you're taking this apart. You kind of want to hold it. There we go. 
So here is our little adjustment right here. So you're going to move this in and out, and this is a boost referenced fuel pressure regulator. So for every PSI of boost pressure, it'll increase the fuel pressure by one. So it's a one to one ratio regulator, and you can adjust the base fuel pressure with this. Here's our little spring, and the diaphragm is in here. There is an O-ring right here that seals as well, so that could have gone bad. Yeah, this guy does look pretty flat. That could be the issue. The diaphragm is holding. It's fine. So the diaphragm is on the inside and it's built into this little bottom portion. That's where the spring rides. Mm, yep. The Alex Mighty Vac says that that is fine. I think this O-ring might be leaking. This O-ring does not look good at all. Well, this thing is flat as a pancake. Let's see if this is leaking now. Bring it right up to where the engine should be operating. Yeah, nothing. Cool. That seal is bad. Although, I mean, we, we fix it with the RTV. Honestly, we'll just see how this goes. I'll order up a new seal, but I mean, this is working. With that fixed, let's clean the other rail. All right, so before we do anything with the O-rings, I just laid this out so we can clip it together and hold it. All right, so we're gonna replace these O-rings and lubricating them. Okay, and we cleaned up these little lines as well. So this fuel rail system is gonna look pretty sweet when we're done and hopefully not leak. That's, that'd be nice. There we go. And I have to say, this is a good looking fuel line rail system. Kind of annoying to replace all these O-rings, lots of points of failure, but Looks kind of cool nonetheless. And the last screw. And here is our fully rebuilt LT1 fuel rail for the cost of really nothing. Like 10 cents, maybe? All right, so we're gonna do our high speed test again. We got 41 milliliters last time. Start. There we go. All right, so if we did anything to make these flow more, which I don't believe we did, it would be over 41 milliliters. We're gonna find out here shortly. Watch, it gets less than 41 now. That is a nice looking spray pattern right there, I must say. It got way, way better <laughs> later on. What do we got? Oh, there we go, 41, 41. That's very satisfying. Everything is very satisfying with this machine. But anyway, let's go replace some O-rings and get this rail back on the car. All right, so we just did a little cleanup, got all the leaves and debris out of here. Don't worry, we will be doing a full engine detail and an entire Corvette detail inside and out. We're gonna save that all for one video after we get this thing running and driving nicely. Um, but for now, this is really good to get our injectors back in. Everything is clean. All right, so we have all the injectors laid out in order and we did replace all of the O-rings. So we're good to go there. Just lubricate both ends and pop them in the intake manifold. All right, so we have all the injectors in. Now it is time for the rail. I got both fuel rails lined up nicely. Plug these guys back in too. That always helps. All right, guys, and here you have it, our resealed fuel rail, uh, new seals for the injectors, fixed a leaking fuel pressure regulator, ultrasonic clean on the injectors, and wow, do these fuel rails now stand out in the midst of all this dust and dirt. And something else that stands out is all of this red tape and kind of hacked up vacuum lines and whatnot. So we're gonna take this off and fix a few things. Just make sure that everything is sealing because we don't need any vacuum leaks either. What do they got going on here? Why did they wrap this in red tape? Were they literally using this tape as a seal? I think they were. They were definitely trying to get it to help seal. But yeah, this is very loose. I don't like any of this. All right, so I just took all the tape off and we just have so many failure points right here. There's a connection going here and then another one here. We're gonna eliminate a lot of that. So we're just gonna remove all of these guys here, goodbye. All right, so I'm just tightening up this valve cover right now before we drop something in here. What is the point of all of this? Where was this plugged into? We couldn't find it. And we look back at old footage and it's plugged in right in between these connectors on this stud right here. So it does absolutely nothing. They literally plugged a vacuum line into a metal stud. So that means all of this can go bye-bye. This is for the gauge. All it needs is a reference source. We can put it right here. All right, so we just need a little piece to connect this into here. 
There we go. And I'm sure this was leaking a bit, so we probably fixed a little bit of a vacuum leak. And let's just get rid of all these connections. We don't really need any of them. Pop the roll cap back on. And here's what it looks like with a little bit of vacuum line cleanup. So no more red tape. And I eliminated another connection point here by the regulator. So we got rid of all of this and have this. And right now I wanna fire the engine up and see if anything we've done so far makes this thing run better. Look at our good fuel pressure. And we do not have any kind of fuel leak. So that's nice, very nice. Still got a little bit of an exhaust leak, we gotta figure that out. That's idling really nice, I gotta say. But that wasn't really the issue, it was under load that it would start to break up. All right, so we'd have to take it out for a ride to see if it really fixed it up, but it's running well. I don't wanna heat this engine up too much. Let's go pull some plugs, see what we can see there, and boroscope to inspect our pistons and hope that they are aftermarket. Oh, and if you guys are curious on the fluid, we did check this. So the supercharger has its own self-contained oiling system, and you do have to swap out this fluid every so often. Uh, so this is a Pro Charger kit. The kit alone, I'll pop it up here on the screen, is about $7,000 and that does not include any of the fuel injectors, the fuel pump, the tune, any of that stuff. And they still sell this kit. So 7,000 for that, plus all the tuning and fuel, you're looking at about a $9,000 kit, but the oil level is absolutely perfect and super, super clean too, which is really nice to see because I was a little bit worried about how the supercharger sounds, but a lot of you guys said, these older ones just kind of have that gear sound to them, but really good fluid, level is perfect. So we are good on our Pro Charger. So I believe this is a P1SE. Well, I gotta say, working on an LT1 Corvette is kind of difficult. Those are the two rear spark plug wires. Tell me if you, uh, you know, see the front two. I mean, what, what in the world? You can't get into anything here. Here's the harmonic balancer right in front of all of this. Wow, look at this, no room to do anything. Yeah, and then on the passenger side, we can get to this plug wire right here. Looks like they're red, could be tailors, but wow, this looks difficult. Now, luckily it doesn't look like the water pump is leaking. What happened a lot was the water pump would leak and it was right above the OptiSpark, so the distributor. And then you'd have to replace the OptiSpark and the water pump. It was a big nightmare. What do we got here? Ooh, we got TR6s. Nice, let's hope they're in good shape. Okay, here we go. Please be in good shape, spark plug, please. Here we go, here we go. Okay. Yeah, you know, there's no oil on it, which is good. Not the worst plug in the world, but, uh, oh man, do I have to change these out? We could Italian tune up clean. I don't know, let's boroscope the motor. Let's see what we got. All right, into das cylinder. Here's our valve, it is open on this cylinder and we can see the back side of it and it looks really nice and clean. I like to see that. Now this piston is basically all the way up, but we can see the valve relief right there. And it's got a little carbon on it. Definitely needs a little Italian tune-up, that is for sure. Now the big question, is this an aftermarket piston or not? Are these big valve reliefs factory on an LT engine? I don't know. Let's try another cylinder though, so we can get a better view because this one is just too far up. Look at this second spark plug I'm about to pull out. It is right up against the exhaust. This stinks. All right, here we go. Not bad, I think someone actually torqued these things in. Someone loved this car. This was a nice car not too long ago, like five, six years ago. God, I would love to know who owned it. All right, here is our second spark plug and it looks exactly the same as the first one. I don't think this would cause a misfire. It's a little crusty, but nothing horrible. All right, here is our second piston that we are inspecting. This one is super high up too. This Corvette is like forcing me to replace all the spark plugs, isn't it? God, I don't know. I don't know if this is a factory piston though. Look at the relief on the piston. That is massive. Are these factory? Oh man, we got to pull another one. I think we might have figured out at least where our exhaust leak is though. There is a lot of soot on this spark plug. I wonder if it's leaking from right in here. It did sound like it was coming from the back of the engine. I assumed like an EGR tube or something. All right, hopefully this piston is down. Should be. Now, like I gotta say, we have some really nice Taylor spark plug wires. Look at these. More of the same. 
Man, this one's up all the way too, isn't it? Oh, these pistons are killing me. All right, I'm trying to get this wire off. Okay, there we go. It came out pretty easily, actually. Sweet. Oh, wait, no. Not sweet at all. Oh, geez. This might be our problem. Dude, hang on a second. Wow, look at this wire. It deteriorated. I think the rubber just got too hot and it just broke off. Yeah, look at that. That is the end of the spark plug wire on the spark plug, and everything is all full of black soot. I wonder if the manifold is leaking right on there and it basically just dried that out and it broke apart or it just simply got too hot from the exhaust. Let's take a good look at this spark plug wire. It's in like a double sleeve too. What is going on here? This is hard. There's like a hard part of the wire or something. I don't know what's going on. I can't get this off though. Oh yeah, this just melted in here. Look at that. Wow, look at this. This is definitely why this engine wasn't running well or maybe one of a few issues, but wow, look at that. We were definitely down a cylinder. That is bad. And they knew it was gonna happen. That's why they put two of these things in here. Wait, this is triple, this is triple wrapped. Look at this. Here's one sleeve, here's another sleeve, here's another sleeve. Oh, wow. Hold on, let's just keep going up the rabbit hole. No, that's usually down the rabbit hole, but we're going up right now. This is all melted in here too, I think. Actually, I wonder if this is old spark plug wire. Like they've been down this before. Yeah, I think I think they've had multiple spark plug wires just melt on this one. And the old pieces are in here. That's It's hard in here. Like the old wire is in here. Yeah, they were having issues. That's why they wrapped the headers. They just wrapped everything. It was getting too hot and melting these super long spark plug wires. This is why people do LS coil swaps on these guys. Yeah, that was not making any connection whatsoever. God, I wonder how long ago this happened. You know, this is the one that hasn't been firing for a while and it's definitely pretty dark. All right, we finally have a piston that's down. We can see the valve reliefs. Yeah, that looks normal. I don't think that's damage on the piston. That looks too perfect. That's probably for the direction of the piston. Um, let's see, cylinder walls look fantastic so far. Sometimes when you see these rings, you can kind of tell it's been sitting around before it was started a few times. And there's a good look at the piston with the valve reliefs. Oh uh, yeah, this looks like it's in really good condition though. Kind of looks like a, someone's smiling at you. Hello, I'm a piston, but are you factory or are you forged? I don't know, you must Google me. So it's got this little center circle deal going on here too. All right, let's look it up on the internet. All right, so I was in the process of reaching deep down in here to get these spark plug wires out. It's very, very difficult. We are, of course, replacing all the spark plugs. I was always gonna do that. And we got some new TR6s that just came in. I think we found our piston and I do believe this is gonna be a stock piston. So this is a stock replacement piston. So this isn't a forged piston or anything like that. And it has the exact same valve reliefs. Now that's not to say that you can't get a forged piston that has the same valve reliefs. That would actually make a lot of sense. But everything we were looking up, this piston with that same little circle deal in the middle uh, are all factory replacement or factory pistons. So I do think we have a stock bottom end. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm incorrect. But at this point, I don't really care. I mean, it would have been nice to have a forged engine, but with that spark plug wire broken apart like that, I'm so excited to get these new plugs in and see how this Corvette runs. Could it be just a burned up spark plug wire? It could be. Come on, baby, just get out. I don't wanna to be too violent with these spark plug wires either. They're really nice tailored plug wires. We got this one off nicely. Cool. So obviously we gotta replace the one, but what is, what is this stuff? What in the world? Oh man, this is some weird alien stuff. Look at this, it's got like a corrugated deal. Okay, so this is what melted inside of these little protectors. So these wires are wrapped up in this. This is odd, I've never seen this. I mean, I've worked on a ton of performance cars. I've never seen this plastic stuff. It's like melted on though, which could be because it's getting hot, but it's like another, it's, like, oh, it's just another layer of protection. Oh, here we go, this is probably what it was supposed to look like. So it's just something to protect the spark plug wire from getting pierced. And this is what happens when it gets kind of hot. Okay, that explains it, I'll take it. So on the driver's side, I was able to get the spark plug wire off pretty easily. And now I have run an extension with a swivel. Okay, cool. It's like I'm working over here, but everything's getting done over there. All right, maybe LT1 spark plugs aren't that bad with headers, I don't know. I mean, we only have about, I don't know, about a half hour into the back four that we did with boroscope footage. Not too bad. Still prefer the LS, of course. Let's get this spark plug out of the control arm. They're, they're kind of black. I mean, these probably aren't working to the best of their ability. That's for sure. It right, looks like we can get the other front plug through here as well. So 
that means we are on number six right now, people. Not good at percentages, but we are most of the way there. All right, we've got four new spark plugs in so far, and this one is definitely not fun. Where do you go? Into the abyss. Alex. They're a lot easier to take out than they are to put back in, let me tell you. All right, I've got one more spark plug to do down below, but we have to tackle this spark plug wire and take a look, or I mean, don't take a look at all because there's really nothing you can see. There are some wires going to the OptiSpark right there. No way to access them from the top. Here's the wire in question, and you can't even see it. It just disappears right here. There's no access in here. That is a leaf spring. And then if you look at the front of the engine, this is this is it. There's the balancer. There, this is this is insane. Now the good thing is the previous owner used very high quality wires and they're in excellent condition. They aren't dry rotted or anything. So if this end didn't simply burn off, I think they would have been totally fine. So we're not gonna replace this. We're gonna fix this for just a few bucks. And I'm gonna demonstrate this spark plug wire repair on the bench just so you can get a good visual, but then I'll do it on the car. Uh, and this is everything you need. This is a universal spark plug wire kit. It comes with ends, it comes with boots, and this right here, including the silicone spray, very important, is everything you need. So let me show you how easy this is. All right, so first things first, you have to cut the insulation off the end of the spark plug wire in order to install the metal connector that's going to clip onto the back of the spark plug. Now, these kits already come pre-cut, so you just have to peel the insulation off. But here, let me show you how easy this is to peel the insulation back if you're doing this on a wire that you're repairing on the car. You just clip the end off. You can see the core in there. And then if you put the wire against something hard, like this catalytic converter, you can just kind of twist it. And right now we're just cutting right through the insulation. We're not gonna damage the core at all. All right, and then from there, we're just gonna peel it right off. And here is our core. Here it is up close. That's the part that goes zap, zap, zap and sends electricity to your spark plug. All right, so back on the bench, we're going to now crimp on our connector. So what we're gonna do here is fold over the core, just like this. And then we're gonna slide this connector over just about there. So make sure that the core is facing down so it's making good contact. Now I'm gonna take my pliers and just start to compress this a little bit to make it easier to fit into my crimping tool. And all we're going for is that that fits right into that little groove and then this is going to come down on the top side to make the crimp so we just want to make sure we're lined up on the top just like that and now we are simply going to squeeze here's a little side view of the action crimp and just keep on going until the tool resets and it'll open up on its own and don't do what i just did and forget to put the boot on it's really no big deal if you do though silicone spray is your friend here and it should just slide right in just like that. And just make sure that you clock the terminal like so. And then your spark plug will snap right in. Just like that. And there you have it. The same exact repair done on the C4. And we've saved ourselves a lot of time and some money by not replacing the entire wire, which isn't necessary at all. Here she is with the boot installed. So let's go ahead and put our last spark plug in right over here. Yeah, the easiest one. Oh, if only they were all like this. But we're only about three hours deep into replacing all the spark plugs and fixing that wire, so not the end of the world. I've had much worse, trust me. Oh, and if you're wondering, this is part of our rescue toolkit. So we bring these universal spark plug wires out to the abandoned cars that we've never seen before and that we need to try and get running. And this really helps out if we ever need to replace a spark plug wire that we don't have specifically for that vehicle. But we haven't had to actually use this on the road in the videos yet. One day though. All right, I have all the protective sleeves back on. Go ahead and click this guy on. All right, so everything's plugged back in. This side too, of course. Now we still have an exhaust leak to diagnose, but let's fire this thing up and see how it runs. See if we fixed it for just a few dollars. Man, I hope this fixes it. All right, definitely a little rough. Did we make it worse? No pressure is good. Okay. All right, check it out. I've been looking around everywhere and now it won't start. That sounds kind of like there's an ignition issue at this point. And we know we have good fuel pressure and it's holding, it doesn't leak out. Ugh, what is going on? Okay, it's about 15 minutes later and I think, I think I may have found what's going on. So a lot of you guys have mentioned that these aftermarket coils are no good. And I myself have never seen anything good 
come out of these supposed higher power coils. So I was messing around, I'm looking at this thing, and this guy just pops off really easy. I'm like, what, what's going on here? Look at this. We did not mess with this before. Look at what's going on. What in the world? You can't even see where the terminal is anymore. So let's see if we can fix this. And this could have been why it didn't run well. It was enough spark sometimes just to barely go through this main ignition wire. This goes right to the distributor to feed all the other wires. Could have just been enough because you can still see a little bit of metal. There's even corrosion on here. Possible this could have been like this for a while. I don't know, this is so weird. Let's get a little pick tool in here and try and fish this thing up. Oh man, it is really stuck in there though. You know what, I'm just gonna try and take this boot off completely. There we go. Oh yeah. That is bad. This has been like this for a long time. Look at all the rust here. Oh man. This has probably not really been on here for a very long time and just us messing with it jarred it enough to where it won't start now because it progressively got worse. Like it ran pretty well at the auction and then as we drove it, it just kept on getting worse and worse and worse and now it won't even start. That would definitely do it. And looking at the Carfax, this car hasn't been driven more than a few hundred miles in the last five or six years. And I wonder if this is why it wasn't a no start along with the lack of fuel. I don't know, but either way, let's fix this. Make this thing chrome. I mean, we could just splice in a new end, but we don't have a lot of slack here. Down there, we had a few inches. So getting the outside is all fine and dandy, but we need to clean inside of here. This brush should help. Look at all this rust and corrosion. This is crazy. Just gonna scratch this up with a pick. It's kind of hard to get a wire wheel inside of here. This battery cleaner with acid indicator usually works pretty well. Just get a little of that in there. Stuff foams up really nice and we'll agitate all of the rust in here as well. And then we'll spray it off with some electrical contact cleaner. All right, this guy's looking pretty good. Get a little bit of dielectric grease. I've been putting this on all the other spark plug wires as well should protect it. And if you guys remember in the last video, this thing did die as soon as we pulled out of the auction. It started running poorly and it wasn't because it was out of gas. I thought that was kind of odd. We did have a totally dead battery, but this alternator seems to be working okay. So it should have ran. And I think this is it. I think this is why it died out. And then we were under the hood kind of messing around with stuff and it fired back up. So this might've been the bulk of all of our issues and that wire down there, that's, that's never good. Now let's get our protective boot back on. Silicone spray for the win on this one. Nearly impossible to get these boots to slide over without silicone spray. And we have some very tight quarters here. I wonder, I wonder, did they pull this thing off accidentally and they couldn't get it back? Look, this stops right here with this shield. See the shielding right here? That's where it stops. I wonder if that's what held them up. So let's kind of peel this back a little. So we can just simply go down a little bit more with the boot. So I'm trying to push this up and it won't go up anymore. What is going on? Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Now, now we have a good connection. Here's another thing. This guy needs like another half inch. Like right now, if we put it on, we'll pull this boot out and it'll feel like it's on, but it won't be because that guy's going to slide down. Let's see if we can. Oh yeah, there we go. We can get a little bit more out of her. No problem. Now we should get a nice positive click. Yes, yes. All right guys, with that, let's fire it up. I think it's gonna work. I was just poking around a little bit more and check this out. This one was hiding right behind here. We had a big vacuum leak. This goes right here. Okay, that could help. That sounds pretty darn good. All right, well, she's off the rack, and I don't think we have any misfiring going on at all. This sounds great. I do think it sounds like it has a small cam. It could be the GM hot cam that a lot of you guys had mentioned, which is a popular upgrade cam when you do the LT4 heads and headers and little bolt-ons and stuff, but no smoke whatsoever. It's basically a low emissions hybrid Toyota at this point. some boost. 
Oh man, that felt pretty good. Okay, so we're right at about like four PSI of boost on the gauge. Um, I thought it'd be a little bit more. I thought it'd be more like six. Who knows how accurate this, this is. I don't like that. <laughs> okay, we got the kind of older, older tires, a lot of boost right off the line. Oh man, this is very tempting guys. I don't have a wide band in here and I don't know anything about the tune. So I really can't go nuts, but it feels good. Let's give it like a little, little half throttle. Ooh, that trans, yes. Trans feels great. I'm liking my C4. This thing is awesome. I can't wait till we can actually get on it. I'll see if I can get on the dyno as well. I don't think it's gonna break any records, but this should have about 500 crank horsepower, something like that. a solid five PSI on that one. Just doing really quick blips though. Did I mention this was like 3,300 bucks at the auction? Cause it was. Oh, and if you guys are wondering, yes, there are a lot of auction fees. So out the door, it was like 4,075 or something like that. So kind of a lot considering the cost of the car, but there's like a minimum threshold. Uh, so I think the more expensive the car gets, the lower the percentages or something like that. Still a very good deal though. About 4,000 bucks for this thing. I'll take it. The exhaust is very droney, I gotta say. And it sounds good, but it's just, it's kinda loud inside. All right, guys, we gotta get back to legit street quarters. I think it's about to storm, and I do not own a target top for this car, so we have to get it inside. But in the next video, we're gonna hook up an AFR gauge, so we'll put the wide band gauge right here because this has a dead temperature. Oh, it's literally not connected to anything. That's hilarious. Uh, so we have a dead gauge here in an open spot, so we'll hook up our wide band and we will see what the AFR is so we can actually go real wide open throttle, feel the boost, feel this boosted LT1 engine as a boosted RX-7 goes by. You're lucky, dude. You're lucky I don't know what the AFR is on my vet right now and I don't wanna blow it up. We're also gonna continue with some more maintenance work on the C4, remove the fuel sending unit because it doesn't work, we'll try to fix that. And I'm sure a bunch of other cool and interesting things on our old and abandoned C4 from the auction. So with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if for some crazy reason you haven't already. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.